It's Dallas week, although nobody around here seems to care. Do you care? Well, we've got some interesting tidbits here for your game preview of Cowboys at Commanders here on Ref the District. Let's go. <music> Greetings and salutations and welcome to this game preview of Cowboys versus Commanders here on Ref the District. I am the stoner. We are a proud member of the Believe Network. Appreciate everybody for joining us. Make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. If you are listening on audio, wherever you may listen to your audio podcast, make sure you leave a rating and review. Every little bit helps get our content out there and spread the word. We appreciate you doing so. So look, I get it. It's it's Cowboys week and nobody seems to care. It's the last game of the year. We did this last year too. But some people seem to care last year because there was still a little bit of hope with the coaching staff, with Sam Howell, all that other stuff, having his first game. But this year, nobody seems to care. I get it. I understand. But still, we got some really cool information to talk about in this game preview here um, on Ref the District. There's some good stuff in terms of what Washington wants to do and what Washington doesn't want to do in this, I'm sure, the last game for Ron Rivera as coach, Eric Bieniemy as offensive coordinator, maybe the last time Sam Howell starts as a Washington commander unless he becomes a backup and starts for injury replacements. But that's, let's look a little bit at the Cowboys and injuries, for example. Uh, defensive tackle Jonathan Hankins, who has missed the last three games, looks like he'll be back for this week quite possibly. Uh, their backup running back, uh, Rico Dowdell, missed the Detroit game last week. Looks like he'll play this week. And left guard Tyler Smith, he tore his plantar fasciitis against Detroit, and he is not practicing all week, but he still might play. If not, then you have an undrafted rookie, um, TJ Bass, who's going to play there. You know, maybe Jonathan Allen slash Deron Payne can take advantage of that, but we'll talk about Washington's injuries as well. But otherwise, the Cowboys are a full go. They are healthy. They've got some guys who are going for records. Um I believe C.D. Lamb leads the league in receptions right now, and he's like 60-some-odd yards behind Tyreek Hill for the yards. Um, so he's got a lot to play for. But, of course, the Cowboys have a ton to play for. They are going to get up for this game against Washington. This will not be like last year when they had a little bit to play for, but they needed help, and their heart really wasn't in it most of that game. And then – Late in the second half, they started pulling all of their starters out. Um, but here's what they have to play for. If they win, period, regardless of what happens with the rest of the NFL, if the Cowboys win, then they will be the number two seed. They'll win the NFC East, first of all. They'll be the number two seed, which means what? They get a first-round playoff game at home. And if they win, they'll get a second round playoff game at home. And then, of course, depending on what happens with San Francisco, if they get knocked out earlier, then they could have the NFC Championship game at home. Why is that important? Well, this year, they're 8-0 at home. That's why it's important. And with a 11-5 uh, record overall, that means they are 3-5 and on the road this year. They need to play at home. So they've got a lot to play for. And all, by the way, they've won 16 straight games at home going back to last year as well. So they need to be at home, so they need to win. If they lose and the Eagles win, of course, the Eagles will have the number two seed. The Eagles will be the NFC East champions, and Dallas will fall all the way down to the fifth seed. they going on the road. So if you're a Commanders fan, don't you want to do that? To the Cowboys, don't you want to force them to go on the road and have a tougher first round game? And hopefully they get beat in that first round. I'm just saying there's some incentive if you're a Commanders fan and you want to root uh root for them to uh for the commanders to win and the cowboys to lose. Look, Dallas is a 13 point favorite, and the over-under is 45 and a half. That's interesting. Why is that interesting? You ask. Well, it's the first time in 20 years that an NFL team, any NFL team, there have been some bad teams. The Cleveland Browns went 0-16 one year, and this didn't happen to them. This is the first time in 20 years that an NFL team is a two-touchdown underdog at home in consecutive weeks. First time ever. 
First time in 20 years, not ever in the last 20 years that that has happened. So not in good territory, but look, if you're, if you want to bet on this game, you can go to Ben online and you can get, uh, 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 you can get the commanders at plus five fifty on the money line. Whew. But you know, the NFL playoffs are right around the corner. The NBA season is in full swing. Bet online has you covered for all the up to second odds, news and scores with additional Odds, lines, trends, and info on both desktop and mobile. You can access the world's best wagering information anytime. Head over there today to get all the action and updated odds. Remember to use the promo code BELIEVE, B-L-E-A-V, to receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet online where the game starts. Okay, so you know the uh, 13-point favorite. First time that's happened in 20 years that, that an NFL home team has been a two-touchdown underdog two weeks in a row. Look, they're playing two of the best teams, but still, that's a dubious record to be a part of. I don't like being part of dubious records. So let's get to what Washington has to do or what they're trying to avoid. First of all, you're trying to avoid going 0-6 in the NFC East this year. Put all the put all the um uh put all the tanking and the draft position behind. We'll get to that. But for right now, you're trying to avoid going 0-6 in the NFC East. Um you're trying to you're just trying to avoid the embarrassment of getting blown out again by the Cowboys. This is an afternoon game, the 425 Eastern Time game. So most of the country is going to be watching this game. So that's what you're you're trying to do. Player wise, I think what you're going to see is you're going to see a lot of guys not playing, a lot of veterans, a lot of veteran um type guys with contract situation in hand. So even though they're not on the injury, some of these guys are not on the injury report, You, they might not play. And some of them are on the injury report. But look for guys like, even I would even say Brian Robinson. While he's not going to play probably because of injury, maybe Sam Cosme doesn't play. Okay, Sam Cosme, the best offensive lineman we have, and someone who finally went through an entire 17-game schedule, for the first time in his career. Maybe he doesn't play. Maybe you want to protect him. Charles Leno's probably not going to play because of injury. Logan Thomas may not play. He's still got a year left on his contract. Of course, they could definitely cut him and eat some of that cap money. But on the other side of the ball, guys who probably won't play. Jonathan Allen probably won't play. You might not see a lot of Deron Payne. Uh, you're not going to see guys like uh, Kendall Fuller. Maybe St. Juice doesn't play. And you've already got injuries to guys like Jamin Davis, of course, and Forrest. And you might not see Percy Butler. You might you're gonna not see a lot of guys. You're gonna see a lot of young guys. Now, Cam Curl, you probably won't see. He's in the contract year. He's proven what he's had to prove. There's no reason for him to go out there in this game. So probably won't see him as well. But there are a lot of guys who got to prove something. Guys who are hanging by a thread. Sadiq Charles. What about him? Uh, what about Cole Turner? What about Kali Hudson? What about the two ends, James Smith Williams and Casey Tuhill, who are both free agents at the end of the year? What about all your young guys, your rookies? Of course, Quan and Manuel Forbes, uh, guys like that. They got stuff to prove. So they're going to be out there. But you're going to see a lot of names you never heard of probably be out there playing on Sunday. So there's an aspect also to look out for in this game to be interested in. How are these young guys going to play? in a game that the other team is playing hard. Um, and, and then I wanted to bring up something that somebody said here, which absolutely blew me away. And this was on our live show on Wednesday. And somebody said, if the commanders win this game, then he's done with this team forever. If the commanders beat the Cowboys, he's out as a fan forever. Think about that for a second. Think about somebody saying, I understand the context as it comes to uh, reference to tanking. I understand that. But imagine anybody saying that. Imagine saying that 10 years ago, 15 years ago. Imagine saying, if my team beats the Dallas Cowboys, I'm going to quit them as a fan. That's crazy talk. Again, I get the the reference point there. I understand that it's part of the uh, you want them to tank and everything. But I just, I could never say that in my life. I could never say if my team wins, 
I'm going to hate them forever. That's crazy talk to me, but I get it. I get it. Um, there's context there. I totally understand it, but still. So let's kind of get to the tanking and the draft position and everything. Um, and and I, but actually, before we do that, I talked a little bit in the opening about this being Dallas week, being Cowboys week, and it doesn't feel like it. It doesn't feel like it. And it hasn't felt like it for years. We got to get back to that. We got to get back to that. And of course, the only way you do it is by beating the Cowboys. And maybe again, in context, you don't want to beat them this year because you want the better draft position, but we just got to beat Dallas and, and build up that rivalry again. Cause right now it's not a rivalry. We're not a rival to anybody right now because all we do is lose, 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 lose. And if you didn't see the short that we put out earlier this week, go check out our page. And the short is that in the last 32 seasons, NFL seasons, this starts after the Commanders, after the Redskins won the 91 Super Bowl. 32 seasons since then, every single NFL team Every single NFL team has won at least 11 games in a season twice. Every team has done it at least twice, except for Washington, who not only hasn't done it once, they haven't done it at all. Washington hasn't won 11 games in a season since the 1991 season. Think about that for a second. Every team has done it twice. Washington has done it zero times. That's where we are as a franchise. And it's making me a little teary-eyed. I'm serious. I can't believe that this is what this organization has come to. And hopefully there's changes, improvements in coming up. But it's, it's depressing, and I can't believe it. But for all those who want to lose, look, Washington has a 69% chance of the number two pick. Okay? And an 18% chance of falling to number three. And it's actually gone up to 76% chance with the announcement that Sam Howell is going to start at quarterback instead of Jacoby Brissett. So now it's up to 76%. But look, a whole lot of things have to happen. Just remember that the strength of schedule is the first tiebreaker. So whoever has the worst or the easiest strength of schedule, the easiest strength of schedule wins the tiebreaker. Because that means not only... Do you suck, but you sucked against an easier schedule. So Washington holds that lead right now, but that changes with every game that's played because it's based on teams' records at that time. So every team's record is going to change. Some of the teams go up, some go down. So that strength of schedule will change. And they're very close to falling behind New England. And I know there's some smart people out there who have figured out exactly what team needs to beat what team in order to in order for Washington to hold on to that number 2 pick. Great, figure it out, whatever. They're probably going to have the number 2 pick if they lose. But they could drop to 3, they could even drop to 4. A lot of crazy stuff's got to happen, but it could happen. And if you win, you could also stay at 2, depending on what all the other teams do. You can't control all that stuff. You can only control what you do on Sunday. So if you want them to if you want them to lose to get to give them a better shot at that draft position, that's probably what they're gonna happen. They're also trying to avoid going losing eight games in a row. Eight games in a row. Right now they've lost seven games in a row. How embarrassing is that? Why do we want more of that? Why do we want to end on eight games in a row? This team was once four and five. And now they're four and twelve. And you want to lose another one? I, I get it. I understand. But that's, those are the odds of winning this game. But look, it's going to be a lot of fun on Sunday just because it is our uh, last live stream of the play-by-play of the game for the year. So there probably will be some drinking involved and some games where we'll do shots for certain things that happen. Maybe every time they show Ron on the sideline doing this or every time they show the coaches who have been in Washington who are – who are out there succeeding or when they talk about the offensive linemen who are playing on other teams, all that stuff, we'll do something. It's going to be a lot of fun. So come on by because we're not going to pay too much attention to the game. 
We're going to be looking at it and cheering it, but we're going to kind of be doing year and review type stuff. We got some great stuff planned in the off season. You got to stick with us this off season. We're going to go through what we believe is the most important steps to building, rebuilding a franchise. So every week we're going to put out about, we're going to have stats and history about GMs, about coaches, about quarterbacks, about linemen, about drafts, about free agency, all of that. And so we can show you what it would take to rebuild a franchise, this particular franchise, the franchise we love, the Washington Commanders. And we hope you all join us for all of that. Just join us Sunday. We'll have another instant reaction. And probably Monday we're going to have our um, our instant reaction, our Instapod uh, to Ron Rivera getting fired on Monday and probably Eric Bieniemy as well on Monday. So you're going to want to stay tuned for that. It's going to be a momentous day in the commander's history. That of course will be on Monday, but stick with us always. We're always here. We're always putting out content. Even in the off season, we'll be putting out content all the time. We'll be live every Wednesday, always here doing Washington commanders content because we love doing it. We love hearing from you and we appreciate all of you. So make sure once again, you hit that like and subscribe. If you're listening on audio, leave a rating and review. We appreciate everybody. And this of course has been brought to you by, bet online and until next time beat dallas and be a fan